Johnny, get your gun, get your gun, get your gun. Take it on the run, on the run, on the run. Hear them calling you and me. Every son of liberty. Hurry right away, no delay, go today. Make your dad... Hello, and welcome to the channel. We're out at the range today and we're testing our Nosler ballistic tip 130 grain bullets through our 270 Winchester short magnum for expansion. We're set up at 100 yards. Let's begin. All right, we ran into some issues recovering our 200 yard shot originally, so we're reshooting that range. We're set up, so let's get it done. Looks like a good hit. All right, we're now set for 300. We're now set up for 400 yards. set up for 500 yards with our 130 grain Nosler ballistic tips. Alright, so that was a uh, in the end successful test of the 130 grain ballistic tips from Nosler. A few things I'd just like to address off the bat. Um, to recover bullets at all five ranges, we shot at four different ranges. Uh, yeah, about four. Uh, yeah, we had to keep moving locations because yeah, we had some issues recovering a few of the rounds. Um, this is sort of expected when you're using a non-bonded core round. As you can see here looking at the pictures, um, none of these rounds stayed in a single piece. Um, in part, that's due to the fact that they're non-bonded, so you, you can expect the core to come out of the jacket. Compounding the issue with that is that these rounds are trucking at around 3150 feet per second. Um, so with uh, an extremely high velocity cartridge like this, you know, it, it's generally better to pick a bonded round or maybe a monolithic bullet. Um, and that's definitely something that we're going to be doing in the future, just because we want to see what they look like, but also to save us the trouble of <laughs> running all over the place trying and reshooting ranges. Um, another thing, so we didn't have any of the inspection videos um, at the water jugs because, you know, really when we went up to do each inspection, it took us about 15 minutes to just pick all the particulate matter out of jugs and... Um, yeah, our target stand. One bullet will be spread across like three or four jugs, and we're picking as much lead as we can to to have some results as far as like what we can retain. Um, yeah, we tried our best. <laughs> yeah, um, th this might not be an optimized load for a larger game animals. I mean, if you're hunting like uh, whitetail or maybe blacktail deer, this you know is definitely going to do the job. Like, no, no argument there. But you get into you know larger animal like an elk and 
how much of this is going to penetrate deep is you know questionable i mean the jacket's going to get stopped pretty darn quick and that's something we found you know the jacket would get torn off in the first or second jug and then you'd find lead particulate a few jugs deeper so if you're trying to shoot through something that's got a real tough or real thick hide this probably isn't your uh, you know probably shouldn't be your first choice and this is of course evidenced at the uh, 100 yard mark so we had what little bit of lead we could find there torn out of the jacket you're fortunate enough to have a, a chunk of lead though <laughs> at all yeah. yeah they did do a massive amount of jam damage to jugs in general you know we'd take out like six or seven jugs at each yard or each uh, each range and again you can see this with a 200 uh, a couple chunks of lead there that came right out of the right out of the round I mean the cup of the round is still pretty intact which was useful when we were trying to measure for expansion but 300 yards uh, pretty much the same result um, the jacket itself mushrooms pretty evenly pretty uniformly and we, you know we got you know there, there was a pretty good uh, diameter on the expansion when we measured them but again you know just not optimized 400 yards not much different 500 yards this is where you can really <laughs> you can really see evidence of the uh, the fracturing of a non-bonded round that thing just came apart in chunks and we're glad we were able to find that much of it all right taking a look at our graphs here um, if you've seen any of our other videos especially the 30 caliber videos um, you'll have noticed a very consistent trend line um, and that's generally something that you expect to see with a bonded core bullet the expansion and the weight retention was just all over the place with this I mean you know at the 100 for weight it lost 50 percent of its weight um, which is really just means we couldn't find half the bullet <laughs> you get up to 500 and like that's still 30 percent of the weight missing um, it, which is just it's, it's not the best um, but you know even at 200 like measuring the chunk of copper that we had there you start at 2.8 times the expansion but again that copper jacket is not going to penetrate very far you're just going to have lead fragmented throughout your meat which you know, you're probably going to lose a little bit more meat using a bullet like this than you would a bonded core bullet because you're going to end up cutting away more fragments from that sort of grenade effect I, you know at this velocity I, it'd be uh, interesting to test but it almost seems like you get similar to effect if you fired like a 410 shotgun round at like point blank range <laughs> See how many lead BBs we can pick out of there. <laughs> yeah, it, the get, get like a meat target or something and try that out. I bet the uh, the effect is very similar. Stay tuned for a future video. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if we look down at the uh, expansion standard deviation, uh, you can see pretty high standard deviation uh, as well as with weight. Um, with bonded core bullet, we see about 25% of the standard deviation that we would here. Uh, again, you know, lower numbers are better. So. Uh, a weight standard deviation of you know 9.2 is not great. That's uh, it's kind of all over the place. But at the end of the day, this is a very flat shooting bullet. Um, it was very accurate. Um, and if you're you know you're hunting in an area that uh, you really need to make long shots across like you know open uh, open canyons and you're worrying about wind drift, um, this cartridge is definitely something to look into. 270 wind short mag. And if you're on a budget, you know, hunting deer, yeah, yeah, not a bad route. But if you can afford it, definitely maybe look at like Nosler's Acubond or um, some offerings from maybe Hornady. Yeah, 270 is, is just a just a laser beam. We uh, we have a lot of fun uh, shooting that at, at the extended ranges out to a thousand yards. It's a great cartridge. Yeah, well, thanks for watching. Um, as always, if you enjoyed the video and would like to see more, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there, that the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming, the drums rumble.